I have spent too many hours of my life watching Titanic related content that I think I have developed a bit of an obsession. What's that YouTube? A two hour long simulated video of the sinking of the Titanic? Don't mind if I do. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. But the upside of this obsession means that I just have a wealth of knowledge just chilling in my brain and I thought it was time that I did something with it. You see, when someone mentions the music of Titanic, I tend to think about the iconic hit song sung by Celine Dion, My Heart Will Go On. But today, I want to explore the idea that the reason it was so good is because of the emotional foundation of the orchestral score written by James Horner. So, let me show you what I mean. This piece is called Hymn to the Sea and it represents the tragedy of the Titanic. 15,000 people lost their lives on April 15, 1912 when the Titanic sank into the Atlantic Ocean. How does one even begin to comprehend how to compose a piece of music that could convey the loss of that event? What combination of notes could be arranged to make the audience feel just a fraction of that pain? How do you even begin to take on this challenge? This is James Horner, the composer for the 1997 film Titanic. In, in Titanic, I had, I watched 32 hours of film because Jim was still shooting. He hadn't had time to edit the film and it ended up being watching the movie for three days. So you're immersed in the acting, the everything. So instead of composing music to the edited version of the film, James Horner watched about 32 hours of unedited footage of the Titanic, which is about the equivalent of watching Titanic 10 times in a row. I can't figure out if I would love or hate this experience, but nonetheless, it was the immersion that James Horner needed to begin writing the music for the film Titanic, directed by James Cameron. This guy. I'm the king of the world! Now the pair kind of had a little divorce as James Cameron calls it. They had previously worked together on the film Aliens and it was a terrible experience for them both and James Horner didn't want to work with Cameron ever again. But lucky for us the two reunited and Cameron got Horner to agree to work with him. So one day James Horner played three pieces for the director James Cameron. Cameron says that he cried during every song Horner played that day in his studio. James Horner had found the heart of the film and one of the pieces that was played that day was Rose's theme. This theme represents the romance between the two protagonists, Rose and Jack. And we hear a snippet of it when Jack first sees Rose. A wonderful example of love at first sight. So here is where I get all fancy and use a term that almost every video essay about music uses. It's called a light motif. A light motif is a short, reoccurring musical phrase associated with a particular person, place, or idea. Rose's theme is an example of this. Rose is a character who is essentially forced into an engagement to a man whom she doesn't love to ensure their survival. Because, you know, money and status, yo. This upcoming scene is so important because it shows Rose following her heart, maybe for the first time in her life. And unlike the first time when we heard only a snippet of Rose's theme, we finally hear the whole piece with the lovely vocals by Cecil, as if to say their romance finally has a voice. Or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> Now many of you may be like, hey, that's the theme from My Heart Will Go On, and yes, I will get to that. Now James Cameron, this guy. I'm the king of the world! I don't know why I keep doing that. He wanted Enya to write the music for the film. I can't exactly find the reason online why that collaboration didn't occur, but I do think you can hear the remnants of that idea through the voice of Sissel, and I think it's a great time to point out how Sissel's voice really is almost the heart of the score as well. I can't imagine the film without her voice and I just wanted to point out how wonderful her voice is. So as the tragedy of the film unfolds, Rose and Jack find themselves in increasingly more stressful, emotional and dangerous situations. So every time Rose's theme is used in these moments, as an audience the emotions of these scenes kind of downloads into the music. When Rose realises that she would rather be with Jack than safe in a lifeboat and jumps back onto a sinking ship, we hear Rose's theme. 
The way James Horner uses light motifs is so well done. His score achieves what a film score should do. It enhances the visual medium of the film. Now I'm going to shift focus just for a moment to demonstrate my point. Now if you've ever seen Star Wars, what is the first thing you think of when you hear this piece of music? either hey that's Darth Vader's theme or hey that's the Sith theme. This is another great example of use of a leitmotif by John Williams. Many times throughout the film when the Sith or Darth Vader appear we hear this theme and or a variation of it. Our brains learn to associate the Sith with this theme. The same thing happens in Titanic. When we hear my heart will go on the melodies are loaded with this emotion from the film and it makes the impact so much greater in my opinion. So what if I told you that James Cameron didn't want a pop song for his film and Celine Dion didn't want to sing My Heart Will Go On the first time she heard it, yet here we are. So how did this all happen? Writing, I got to the end of the film and I was afraid just another orchestral cue would be boring. So I made all the little threads that I'd been using throughout the film come together as one long thread for a song. So in James Horner's wonderful creativity and genius, he decides to take melodies from the film to write the song that we all know and love to be My Heart Will Go On. It is just so iconic. It hits you in the feels. And maybe it is due to that decision by Horner to use the light motifs from the film for the main melody of My Heart Will Go On. For example, the opening melody of My Heart Will Go On is the same melody as the tragic hymn we hear at the opening of the film, Hymn to the Sea. And also, just to add another emotional layer in, it is the piece of music we hear when Jack dies. Why? Why? It breaks my heart every time. So it's just another emotional layer added into that melody. So when we get to the credits and we hear this familiar melody, we're like, oh, already an emotional wreck. Not only because we've just sat through this emotional experience, but the music, again, in my opinion, is loaded with this emotion. So when we hear this new song, but with the same melody, it's like, oh. When you rewatch the film Titanic, you'll be constantly like, hey, my heart will go on it here and there and there. It's everywhere. <laughs> just like how it was on the radio every so if you've seen Lord of the Rings Return of the King, it does something a little bit similar but in a more subtle way. So the end song for the film is called Into the West and we get to hear a snippet of that piece in a scene with Gandalf and Pippin in an emotional scene. I think that this is a more Sorry. subtle way to do it. It's just another example of a similar technique to use melodies from the film to then use for the song at the end to have that added emotional feel for the audience. Back to Titanic. So James Horner manages to play My Heart Will Go In for Celine Dion and her husband Renee. And let's just say it didn't go well. I started to play the song on the piano and he's a wonderful writer. But if I may say that he's probably not the best singer out there. And I kept saying to Renee in the back, I was like, Luckily enough, Celine did agree to do the demo for it. The vocals you hear on My Heart Will Go On are the demos, which just goes to show how amazing she really is and how professional she is. And I waited till the right moment to spring it on my director. And one day, he was in a particularly good mood. And then the rest is sort of history. Oscar goes to James Horner, Titanic. The song, the film, and the score all feed each other. I think that this is a wonderful example of how taking melodies from the score to create an emotional tie to the pop song for the film is so clever, and in this instance, it is masterfully done. My Heart Will Go On and the score are fabulous, but they also do make each other better. You know, maybe My Heart Will Go On makes me emotional because I tried to sing it in an audition when I was a child and it didn't go well, so maybe that's just me. <laughs> now, there are many aspects to the score that are worth noting far more than I've mentioned here, so perhaps I will do another video in the future because there are so many more moments that I think are fabulous. If you've gotten this far in the video, thank you so much because I do know this is a little bit different to what I usually do. I would love to continue making these video essays essays on film scores, both soundtracks and scores because I love both. 
So leave other scores that you love down below. I would love to dive into Lord of the Rings, um, some Studio Ghibli films and Disney films at the moment, but let me know anything else that would interest you. Thank you so much and until next time, bye.